Hello, I'm Tina Cover, and I'm going to be reading from my translation of Negar Javadi's Disoriental, uh, which was a finalist for the 2018 National Book Award for Translated Literature and won the Lambda Literary Award uh, for Bisexual Fiction and also the Albertine Prize and I'll link to more information about the book below. The creaking of a chair makes me open my eyes. I must have nodded off because I have the unpleasant sensation of being suddenly jerked awake. I shift in my chair, careful not to let the tube fall. I sit up straight, trying to gather together the thoughts that drifted while I dozed. What time is it? I can't bring myself to take my phone out to check the time. Often at night, just as I feel like I'm finally falling asleep, usually at around 4.45 in the morning, I still have the irritating certainty that any noise at all will keep me from sleeping. I know that the faintest sound, no matter how distant, will resonate with the same intensity as a Metallica concert. So, afraid of being startled awake when I've just fallen asleep, I lie there with my eyes open until the sun comes up. I know what you're thinking. Get some earplugs, you idiot. But you know what? Earplugs cause other problems. Starting with the panicky feeling of being cut off from the world. What if something happens? What if someone dies? Sleep isn't about resting. It's about letting yourself settle, like the sediment at the bottom of a wine barrel. I'm nowhere near trusting this world that much. It doesn't take me long to discover the source of the creaking noise. The couple that's been sitting across from me for hours has finally been called. Their haste and the way the wife pushes the man aside so she can go first smacks of the nervousness of a first consultation. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, all the faces that had turned toward them turn away in one synchronized movement and close back off, like houses in a private development whose lights suddenly turn off at the same time. A new couple, rather oddly matched, soon takes the place of the one that just left. The woman is alarmingly blonde with a UV fried face and shiny lipstick. The man, who might be Indian, is crammed into a dark business suit and looks like he's going to a funeral. He glances around uncomfortably, sitting on the very edge of his seat, as if ready to bolt. Pragmatically, his wife pulls a small bottle of water out of her purse, followed by a sandwich wrapped in plastic wrap, and hands them to him. I think to myself that if she took the time to make him a sandwich before they came here, he's probably the one who's infertile. This deduction has hardly crossed my mind when I'm reminded of one of Sarah's musings on the subject of our neighbors, the Hayavis, married for many years but without children. Of course he's the sterile one. If she couldn't have children, he'd have divorced her ages ago. And there you have the Iranian woman's lot summed up in two sentences.